We hear a lot about healthy eating and then we hear a lot about sports nutrition and it's trying to get the balance right between the two of them and knowing which of the, which advice to, to listen to. So I suppose the first thing to think about is why are you cycling? Are you cycling to be this guy getting ready for Tour de France or the Giro? Or I think pro hopefully most of us here are here just to go out for a nice spin with some friends, have some chats, uh, enjoy a uh, some summer cycling unfortunately if you're the first guy you've come to the wrong talk and I think you need to get yourself a, a private dietitian uh, to give you a talk but if you're like myself and most people here and you're just in for a bit of leisure cycling then this is the correct talk for you so when we think about healthy eating and maintaining our weight it's all about getting the balance right so we're trying to some of us are just trying to maintain our weight. Some people might be trying to gain muscle and gain weight, and some people might be trying to lose weight. So it's really a balancing act. If you're trying to lose weight, you need your calorie output to be higher than calorie intake. And that's really, I suppose, the simple maths to it. So people can find frustrating when they're exercising and they're not losing weight. And that can sometimes be that, Often when we exercise, we actually overcompensate in what we eat because we come back from our cycle and we said, well, that was great. I did a lot of cycling so I can have this nice lunch and this nice dinner and a few extra drinks because of it. So it's, it's I suppose, important to consider it, is everything balanced. So the most important nutrient, I think, when we're on the bike that we're thinking about is carbohydrate. And carbohydrate is our fuel. Our body has this store for carbohydrate and it's called the glycogen store and it stores about 250 to 300 grams of carbohydrate. It's not particularly important that you necessarily need to know how much your own muscle stores or, or this exact number. What's helpful to know is when you're cycling, the body starts to burn up some of this glucose and that's breaking down and it's using it. So that's giving you your fuel. So like your petrol in your petrol tank when you're driving your car, the fuel is emptying from the tank as you cycle. So possibly an hour or two into the cycle, you have only 100 grams left in the tank and very little reserve left. So if you continue on that, you're not going to perform very well. So that's where when you hear about sort of carb loading or snacking on the bike, then that's filling up the tank again. So if you have to maybe, you know, eat, eat a banana and there might be some juice in your drink, that's building up. And there's another bit of fuel to get you through another maybe half an hour to an hour to get you to your to your coffee stop where you're going to build up again. So it's it, it's important that that fuel is there because if you don't have that fuel, so maybe if you start on a cycle where you've gotten up you've skipped breakfast because you haven't had a chance you were running late you've used through all your your glucose and then you end up with no carbs left the body can work on fat and on protein but it's not as good a fuel for the body so then you'll end up crashing or bonking on the bike and feeling awful and then it's actually very hard to recover from that even if you do get the carbohydrate in then it's it's almost too late because the body has has used it gotten to an empty tank and really it's it's very hard to try and fill it from there so when for optimal fueling then for for good performance so ideally two hours before the bike you'll have a carbohydrate based meal so if this is your breakfast you might aim for something like porridge or toast or wheat -bix or a mixture of them all or some juice or some milk so something that's going to give you carbohydrate if you're going out in an even spin you might want a full dinner but you might have a banana and a yogurt or something, something that'll give you enough carbohydrate to be, to be going through the next few hours. Then if your cycle is about, you need about 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate for, per hour. So that's how much you're topping up by. One to two hours. I have lists at the bottom of snacks that contain carbohydrate that Brian will be able to send on to you. I just didn't include it today for time. And then if you're cycling for more than two hours, you might need to consider closer to sort of 60 to 90 grams of carbohydrate an hour to keep you fueled. And I suppose even if you're trying to lose weight, this fuel fueling is important because 
your body won't won't run without the carbohydrates but i suppose if you are trying to lose weight aim for the lower numbers in the carbohydrate that that you're aiming for and the other thing to consider also is your intensity so obviously if you go out for your training and you're going to do the Wicklow 200 you're obviously it's an intense day you're going to need more carbohydrate if you're normally maybe cycling in a fast yellow group but you're out going out to lead a white group well for you the intensity mightn't be as high so actually you won't need as much carbohydrate as you normally will so sometimes it, it's about getting the balance right for for what what's needed for you so it's always good to be prepared and have maybe extra carbohydrate in case the intensity is higher than than you had thought it would be you end up with a maybe a bit of a faster group don't forget your scones so i know we all are missing our scones at the moment i am anyway so your scones are anything from sort of 70 to 90 grams of carbs so actually they're a great snack to be having at the break because they are so dense dense and carbs but just if you're counting in how many carbs you're having don't forget to include them in your in your carb amount so so then just when we come to refueling then so when we come to the end of our exercise even if we've been topping up well our glycogen stores are still going to be low so the body needs to refuel this and this is part of the body's recovery so that will perform well again the next day or in the coming days so you need to top out top up your carbs within two hours of exercise or within 30 minutes if you're planning to do the exercise within the next eight hours so maybe if you've been on an evening spin and you're planning to go back out the next morning it would be important that the fueling would happen sooner rather than later we aim for one gram of carb per kilo body weight two hours post exercise so for someone who's 70 kilos this might be 70 grams so that 70 grams will have filled up the store a little bit more and then the I suppose if it's a morning spin, you come back, you have your lunch, that's 70 grams. And then you're, you're going to have dinner then again later, which might be another sort of 70 or so grams. So your 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 stores will then be filled by the end of the day. So it's, it's sometimes people think that they need to be taking excessive amounts of carbs, but it's just gradually throughout the day once the stores are being refilled, that, that will help. This is just a nice pictorial that the uh, United States Olympic Committee used. So... This is just an idea of what your plate should look like when you're making out from a point of view of vegetable carbohydrates and protein. So if it is that you're looking to lose weight, they would recommend less, less carbohydrates on the plate. And if you're only, I mean, at the moment, we're probably really all only doing easy training because even if we do get out, we can't get out for, for very far. But maybe then at a weekend, you might be considered doing moderate training so you can have your carbohydrate portions a little uh, bigger and then if you did have a big event like like the Wicklow 200 or something, you could look at having bigger portions maybe the day or two before and the day of the event. So it's a, a protein bar is a good snack while cycling, true or false? 60% saying it's true and 42% saying false. False. Okay. So... This is a common misconception, and it's something I think I've possibly said to a few people on the bike. Why, why are you eating protein bars? So unfortunately, protein is not what you want during exercise. It, it's great for after exercise, but during exercise, it's not going to give you energy. So if we look at the label of a fulfilled bar, the bar itself has 15 grams of carbohydrate, which in comparison to what we've been saying that you need in an hour of 30 to 60, or if you look at your scone of being 70 to 90, it's quite small. But actually, even in that carbohydrate, we're not actually absorbing all that carbohydrate. So there's a small percentage of it is sugar. And then most of it is this thing called polyols, which are these artificial sugar alcohols that actually don't get digested and they can actually cause diarrhea so wouldn't be recommending it for a day on the bike so yeah protein protein tends to be slower digested than carbohydrate and it can actually slow down the digestion of carbohydrate if taken if taken together so unfortunately i know a lot of you won't be happy to see but actually the fry that you might have at the coffee shop or the bacon sandwich also isn't an ideal snack to have if you enjoy it and you like having it and you're not considering performance or weight or anything then it's absolutely fine but you're actually taking in a lot of calories but these calories aren't able to give you any fuel because they don't have any carbohydrate in them and if you are having a little bit of toast or something with it the fat and protein from the food actually sits in your stomach for 
much longer and it slows down all the carbohydrates being absorbed. So it, it can sometimes be an error that people make that they, so you've stopped, you've had this high protein, high fat meal. You're then cycling half an hour later, you don't feel great. And then you, you need to have more carbohydrates. And, and then you've, you've taken in calories on the bike that you've assumed you've, you've actually used, but actually you haven't used them on the bike. So when looking at if you're if you're frustrated that you're doing cycling and uh, possibly not not losing weight that you want or, or not being able to maintain your weight, well, it might be just worth looking at what your what your fuel is on the bike and whether whether it's being used. So protein is important for rebuilding after exercise. So that's when it's key. It's necessary for growth, maintenance and repair of body tissues and muscles. But you should be able to meet it from a balanced diet. The requirements for protein post-exercise are actually much lower than people think. They're 0.25 to 0.3 kilos body weight. So for a 70 kilo person, again, that'll be somewhere between 17 and 21 grams of protein. So this is your chicken fillet, a darn of salmon, a pint of milk. So other ideas would be sort of making a milkshake. You get a banana, a peach, a glass of milk. That'll give you your 20 grams of carbs and six, or, sorry, 20 grams of protein and your 60 grams of carbs. So, so a perfect recovery if you don't feel like having meals straight afterwards or chocolate milk, high protein chocolate milk will give you a lot of protein. So protein supplements themselves are poorly regulated. Up to 15% of supplements are found to have pro-hormones that if you are doing a doping test, they would come up as, as an issue. So it's, it's a really poorly regulated place. They don't, fall on, they don't really fall as a food and they don't fall as a medication. So they, they don't really have much reg, regulations in them. As dietitians, we'd always recommend food first. Obviously, if, if you're struggling to meet your requirements as you're doing an awful lot of exercise or you're needing, you know, you're doing you've had a big exercise and you're planning another one the next day, it might be that a protein shake would be suitable for you. But most people will be able to meet their requirements through diet alone. So then fluid, fluid's another important aspect of exercise. I suppose it's important to be drinking regularly on the bike. If you're someone like Rachel who decides to copy me every time I drink myself, that's one way of doing it. Or else sort of setting a reminder some people you can set on your garment to beep every 15 minutes so prompt you to have a drink if you don't feel it but ideally you should be getting sort of 600 mils in 15 minutes prior to exercise and then 150 to 200 mils in every 10 to 15 minutes so you're talking about getting through your litre bottle in in about an hour and a half or so so you know if you're doing a long cycle that might be a bottle and a half before break and another bottle and a half after break a coffee stop so it is important that you fill up the bottles regularly after exercise rehydration is important if you want to be really technical about it you can weigh yourself before your spin and after your spin and you give yourself 1.5 liters for every kilogram body weight that you have lost in case you do want to be technical about it electrolytes can be helpful they are lost through sweating if you if you are losing a lot of electrolytes you can get cramping and headaches the way I make up my own drink is so I'd have my bottle of water I put in a carton of juice which has about 20 grams of carbohydrates so it gives me a bit of sugar as I'm cycling along and then an electrolyte tablet um, and mix that up but there's lots of different ways to make it yourself or to uh, buy drinks with electrolytes or some of the sachets will also have uh, sugar in them so that's I suppose a very quick whistle stop tour there's some extra information afterwards below and hopefully Brian will be able to share that with everyone um, and I'm happy to take any questions that people have. Thanks Quiva that was that was really super I know a lot of the elite a lot of the elite athletes will be disappointed with the breakfast but however <laughs> any yeah. questions there folks uh, if you want to unmute yourself you, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Quiva would you make that drink up for every spin you go out on I think you, you spoke about there. I wouldn't probably do it in the winter, you know, if, I, or if I'm just doing a, a quite enough spin, but I would do it in the summer where I feel like I'm probably sweating a lot more and probably doing more hills, like, you know, going up to Sally Gap, where if you're doing one out to maybe Greystones, I wouldn't feel like I'm maybe needing the same top up of carbohydrate. John Ryan here. If I was to ask you, if you weren't to have a full fill bar, what, what should you have? What's, what's the best thing to have there in that case? So probably... 
something like a Nutri-Grain bar or um, a banana or I've seen people take potatoes on a spoon with them um, <laughs> in their pockets or uh, it's just something something sort of dense in carbohydrates that's going to be easily digested. So I'll get Brian to send around some of these. So here's a few sort of the snacks with with how much carbohydrate is in them. So your Nutri-Grain bars are going to have 25 to 30. Uh, a Nature Valley bar, if it's not the protein one. Um, I put a recipe in for homemade energy balls. Um, so sort of oats and dates. So so it's carbohydrate that you're you're trying to trying to get in. And thanks to Quiva as well. Uh, I know you, you've added a lot of stuff there, Quiva, and we'll make sure that goes up on the on the forum and make it available to people too. <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. In relation to, you didn't mention sugar at all, and that's been bandied around an awful lot. Uh-huh. The problem with sugar, because some of the items you listed would have sugar. Is that part of the component of of energy as well as carbohydrates, or is it because people tell you it's not good for you? Yeah. So, so sugar is a carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. Um. So, it, so there's different types of carbohydrates. There's sugar carbohydrate there's carbohydrate from dairy there's carbohydrate from fruit and then there's carbohydrate from sort of your breads and pasta and rices so i suppose um i didn't go into it in detail but it i suppose you need carbohydrate on the bike the body in some ways doesn't necessarily know where where it's getting the carbohydrate from and um, once it gets carbohydrate when you're on the bike it's happy i suppose if sugar will go into your bloodstream much quicker than a slice of bread would would so if you're on the bike and you're feeling low um and and you feel like you really need energy now you're going to need sugar to bring it up if you're at your coffee break you know that um you know you're feeling good at the moment but you know you have a two-hour cycle home well brown bread and jam would be a good snack that it'll it'll build your carbs gradually and you'll have them so i mean sugar as dietitians we don't like to say that one food is really bad and one food is really good sugar i suppose shouldn't be taken in excess but in in sports sugar does have a part to play when you need that boost of energy quickly thank you so much Quave, and i can see by the comments coming in there that that everybody found that really really useful uh, so once again thank you to Quave.